getting loaded up um, gonna put a whole bunch of stuff here in the uh, the Jackson take two and drag it through those woods to a creek uh, we got some uh, some bank fishermen here hopefully work around them but uh, you know putting in on a little creek and getting back out into some uh, tidal largemouth water here at the top of the Chesapeake Bay. that a lot easier. The longer the length of the drag strap, the less, uh, the easier it is to pull. That being said, it's never easy. So we're in that, that in-between stage between fall and winter, and I don't know what our water temperatures are yet, but I'd imagine, you know, they're, they're probably in the upper 40s, maybe mid 40s, who knows. Um, tidal largemouth absolutely key in on on the tides but also areas where the tide isn't isn't quite as strong as it is during the rest of the year so these these deeper uh, slower slower areas where they still have structure they can hide behind when the tides move in one way and they move a short distance to the other side of that structure and when the tide changes direction you know, they just, just like the river smallmouth and the videos I do to show what those pools look like, very similar. Uh, they don't want to work when they're, they have uh, pretty, pretty low metabolism with that, that uh, colder water. Uh, with the water being cold, it is time for the full dry suit. Uh, unfortunately, with an access like that, I don't, you know, I, I work up a sweat and I've, I've taken off some layers, which I don't like doing, um, but you take layers on and off, and uh, I took a few off because I've really sweated up. Um, I'd sweat up even more if I had the dry suit on already, but it is, uh, it's is—it's time to put in. I'm gonna put that dry suit on just to make sure that, should I fall in, and I, I really don't think I would, because uh, the take two is just super wide and stable, um, but you never know. You, you wanna buy yourself that time to be able to reboard, so. Time to uh, put the dry suit on. So it's colder than I thought. Uh, we got 43.7, and uh, I'm looking in this, there were this creek where I put in, it's very clear water, so and I went through all those different bait options uh, that were not this but I you know I quickly said you know what I feel more comfortable with the finesse jig 3 16 ounce head uh, the shrooms micro finesse jig and this this is the uh, the bat wings trailer so uh, it's just what I felt comfortable with I tied all these these rods on and those baits when I was at home now that I'm out here, I don't know. I want to fish that. Let's do it. So the further I came up the uh, the creek, the colder it got. We're down to 43.1. 43.1 is uh, I, you know I I think it's early enough in the cool down that this creek is probably some of the coldest water out here. You know, the smaller the body of water, the the quicker it is to respond to to whatever the temperature temperature trend is going to be. This is going to be the first place that's going to warm up in the uh, in the spring on those warm warm days, 
after a warm rain in particular, yes, this is going to be a warmer, uh, warmer option. But I feel like for today, we're on the other end of things where, you know, our trend is cooling down. So I'm getting out of it. I'm going to go use my temperature gauge and uh, go find some hopefully warmer, more stable water temperature. We're coming out of the creek and uh, you can already see that water temperature creeping up. It's good. It's what I want. So that water temperature keeps going up. I think if once I find some deep water, which I'm only in like a couple feet of water, uh, but I think once I get into that deeper water, the water temperature go up even more. And I think the deeper water, you know, where, where I'm going to put that jig is going to be uh, even warmer down on the bottom, hopefully next to some wood. We'll see. Uh, my plan is to just cruise along and look and see what I find. Looks like... Uh, that's a fish moving off on that flat. Um, maybe some other fish. Yeah, right next to it. These are fish. What kind? I don't know. That was one that was moving. Huh. I'm going to keep looking. When I see something real obvious, maybe uh, some rock piles or big log jams or something, I will uh, for sure put a waypoint on it and fish it. Here's a quick lesson. Look for the shadows and then move in. That right there isn't real obvious, uh, but those are fish, small ones. There's little lighter dots and you, you can tell, here, here's some more. Um, you know, find the shadows, move inward. Find the shadows, move inward. I'm looking for bigger marks. These are a bunch of bunch of bait fish, which is good. Good that we're near them. Huh. A lot of bait fish. Look at all those. All those shadows. And all those white marks are fish creating those shadows. I like where I'm at. I'm gonna find structure here and uh, start fishing it. I'm, I'm putting away the finesse jig until I find some real obvious places to pinpoint cast. There's so many fish out here. I don't know what they are. I'm hoping they're bass. They could be perch. But it's such a big wide area that I think the right play is to uh, slather up this deep dive and jerk bait. Lucky Craft Pointer 100 with some scent, some liquid mayhem and shad, shad scent, and just, just wander around out here looking, looking at the depth finder, but, but keep this guy, keep this guy in the water, because he can tell me something. If you haven't already, Check out the video on my favorite suspending jerkbait rod. So many fish. This is good. It's a good one. I know that they're bass. <laughs> so clearly, I've been all over this this area, and there's a massive amount of biomass here, but I'm not catching anything. I mean, all these these fish that are showing up on the, the side imaging and I gotta, I gotta move forward a little bit to really have it look like anything but they're in here they're not eating I got my jerk bait out there you know it's uh, I'm giving it a yank every once in a while moving real slow you can see fish flipping at the surface and uh, I don't know there, there, there are bait fish here there are things that bass would eat here are there bass in the mix? I can't imagine they're not but I'm going to move shallow 
I gotta find some, uh, you know, some current brakes, some eddies. I gotta go drag a jig, because this isn't working for me. Uh, these guys just behind me just got one. Nice, man. Okay, well, it's very late in the day, and I decided, well, if I'm going to not catch fish, I'm going to not catch fish throwing a jig. Because I've tried everything else. I threw the jig. This is 40, it's 48 degree water here. A little bit warmer. But alas, one decided to grace me with his presence. <clears throat> Very crisp, singular thump. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thanks for making the trip here worth it. Dropping away point. So, you know, there's a bunch of fish here and everywhere but um they're they're, <laughs> they're just not active i don't know whether i'm looking at a bunch of i'm gonna let them go say bye 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 see i don't know whether i'm looking at a bunch of perch or catfish i don't know Oh, but it felt good to get that one dunk. You know, it's uh, that was my first fish at 4:04 uh, p.m. and all right, could be a lot of the marks I'm seeing. Same spot as first bass and the crappy. I'd call it a feeding station. I am running out of daylight. I'm pretty much out of daylight, but that's okay. I got a headlamp. Alright, it is dark. Time to get out of here. So, I'm not going to tell you how many hours I just fished for two bass, um, but that is not at all how I look at it. I've caught my coldest uh, tidal largemouth bass today. It's only 48, 40, you know, 47, 9, 48 degrees. Uh, isn't that cold? Usually this time I'm doing the river smallmouth thing. And uh, I, I really look at today as, as gaining a toehold. Uh, figuring out, you know, a spot that does work in winter. It's not winter yet, but we're getting there. Um, and that's, that's critically important. You know, a lot of people come out, and I know I talked to, I think I talked to seven different bass boaters today. That one guy who was in that tournament, I watched him catch one on a drop shot. That's gaining some knowledge of, you know, what he was doing to catch fish out here. Um, but of those seven, there were two of them that actually caught fish. There were five other bass boats. These are people that do this on a regular basis here. Uh, that up until when I talked to them, they had blanked. And, and that's two people in the boat. So for sure today was a tough day, um, but I feel good about it because it was a, it was a day in which I got a toehold on this fishery. Absolutely, I'm in I'm fishing a uh, community hole. And when you're new to winter fishing, you gotta go to those spots. You know, when people are new to, uh, you know, to the Winter River smallmouth thing, I send them to community holes because I know there's a lot of fish there. 
uh, it's a starting point. It is somewhere that you can cut your teeth on it. And when you when you learn in a community hole, when you learn in, in somewhere where there's a lot of fish, you can take those lessons and really expand upon it and have the confidence knowing that, hey, you can really go all sorts of places and uh, you're gonna catch it.